Wilbur first became known for his novel, One Man Circus. This miniature circus developed the most original features of his work. The use of new materials like wire for sculpture and the incorporation of actual movement into the design. Crawler was born in Philadelphia in 1898. Both his father and his grandfather were sculptors and his mother was a painter. He grew up in studios in widely separated parts of the country, Pennsylvania, California, and New York. After graduating from high school in San Francisco, he went to Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, taking his engineering degree in 1919. After four years of various jobs all over the country, he entered the Art Students League in 1923. Later, he made frequent trips to Paris, where he became acquainted with the leading contemporary artists. Calder is a characteristically 20th century artist and one of the most original America has produced. His unique quality in 20th century art is the use of motion in design. His materials are usually sheet metal, wire, and wood. These materials have strength as well as lightness, and they respond best to designs requiring delicate tensions and equilibrium. Time, space, and movement are characteristic aspects of 20th century thought, and Calder's art exploits these dominant ideas with a variety and gusto which no other contemporary artist has given them. Even the abstract designs with which he has been concerned since 1930 are enriched by a lively sense of humor inherent in the play of forms and movements themselves. Calder's wire sculpture is three-dimensional form drawn in space by wire lines, like a drawing that is actually three-dimensional. The goldfish bowl uses the simple mechanical device of a small crank to create and control the movement within the space. In the portrait head, we can see how the volume of the head is indicated by the wire, how the features and the expression are created in the new medium with the greatest economy of means. Turning the head around and watching the magnified shadow image helps one to realize the three-dimensional character of the design. About the same time that Calder was devising his wire sculptures, he was also working with a more conventional material of wood. Special qualities of the material, like the grain in the brindle cow, are brought out. Here, too, he tried to get the maximum impression of three-dimensional roundness, as we can see in the square umbrella when it is revolved on a turntable. The wood sculpture, like all Calder's work, is imaginative, inventive, and witty, never merely descriptive. The characteristic activity or the potential movement of the subject is brought out by the play of surfaces, as in the carving of the shark sucker. The same economy of form can be seen in the horse which is composed of three different, almost flat pieces of weathered wood in order to emphasize the characteristic structure. The miniature circus was the means of introducing Calder to important contemporary artists like Mondrian and Miro, who turned Calder from representational to abstract art. He began to introduce actual motion into abstract designs. In the white frame, a small electric motor produces a purely abstract pattern of form and motion. Simple geometrical shapes and primary colors help the spectator to grasp this new form of design in Dancers and Sphere of 1936. Two or three simple movements at different rates of speed make innumerable visual combinations. The mechanical motor-driven mobile has a set pattern which might become monotonous by its very repetition. In the circle, the unpredictable motion gives a greater sense of life. With the free natural movement, whatever was lost in formal pattern could be made up in rhythmic variety. Light swinging forms stirred by the air or the wind set up countless free, apparently spontaneous patterns. Chance plays a larger part in the rhythm set in motion. Very complex relations in space, motion, and colors constitute the pattern of the mobile. Sometimes the mobiles are freestanding, like the circle, and sometimes they hang against a panel which emphasizes the shifting, revolving movements. Sometimes they hang freely in space, like 13 spines. 
The dimensions of a mobile are measured by the total amount of space it occupies, its orbit of activity. The simple geometric forms of the early 1930s changed to irregular curvilinear shapes, more like leaves or petals, sometimes strongly contrasted with straight lines. As 13's spine swings about, it occupies the surrounding air and is even multiplied by the play of shadows it creates. It is the quality of the artist's imagination in horizontal spines that makes the work interesting, not rich materials or elaborate finish. The weight and thickness of the metal is carefully chosen for the size of the piece. Black dots is small in scale, delicate and unusually rich in the interplay of form and movement. Calder gives the scale for the large red among black when he sets it in motion. This huge piece seems to branch over you like the boughs and foliage of a strong sapling. But the forms themselves are abstract, not naturalistic. Mobiles can be designed for outdoors as well as indoors. A larger version of the spider, made of heavy steel wire and sheet iron, can endure all kinds of weather while it animates the view of a terrace or a garden. In Cage in a Cage, we see the same ability to create three-dimensional abstract design in the fixed pieces called stabiles. Visual patterns made by thin white wires heighten the effect of transparency. The form seem to float suspended in space. We've come a long way from the pure geometric forms of the early mobiles. Black thing is made of thin plates of sheet metal. The rich curvilinear design seems to be endowed with a kind of organic life of its own as we turn it around. Increasing use of color to differentiate parts of the more complex designs occurs in the later works. The color is functional to make the form clear and to help the eye to follow the form in motion. Yellow, blue, and orange have been added to the earlier palette of black, white, and red. The heavy bent wire establishes the shape in the hourglass, and within it the fine, quivering, straight wires spin and reverse, apparently of their own volition. Little leaves is set in motion by winding up the string upon which the elliptical multicolored metal pieces are hung. It swings around and sweeps out in a wide trajectory. The sound of the metal moving and the shapes of the pieces recall autumn leaves. This is not a representation of nature, but a poetic equivalent. Prevailing scientific attitudes have given us ideas of flux and fluidity. We are accustomed to change and to movement. Calder is an American and a man of his own time. His vernacular is that of our own day. Calder does not try to invent relations of time and space as such, but his work has that characteristic contemporary meaning. This harmonious imagination of forms in motion is peculiar to the art of our own day. <laughs>